Okay, folks, um, I've done a couple of videos about the uh, shark attack at um, Little Beach, Mulla, Birch and Point, to be exact. Um, what I want to talk about is um, I've, I've been looking over and over and over these videos um, and it's interesting that, um, you know, I've been looking at this from like a, an educational learning point of view, you know, from that point of view. So unfortunately I've had to see, um, you know, the whole horrific um, scene and the blood and the gore and everything um, to dissect this down and I've had to go through it frame by frame and everything. It was pretty hard for me really. Um, but at the same time it was as fascinating as it was hard to watch. Um, you get that human sort of like curiosity and everything and um, yeah that's what happens but looking past all that um, you know we need to identify this shark and, and try to get um, learn from this um, incident I believe you know like um, so that's what I've been getting into um, and I've been posting video online about it without all the um, gore and content um, although I have um, blogged under some of these videos with the description about the initiation the initial part of the attack um, and they all come from the guy that actually took the video one of the fishermen um, I'll, I won't give his surname but I'll just give his first name Kevin all right um, he was the guy that was on TV talking about um, it, it sounded like a car landing in the water, you know, that was must have been when the shark come back down after breaching the water. Must have breached the water somewhat, quite a bit, to uh, make a splash like that back in the water, like a car hitting a drink, you know, jumping off the cliff and hitting a drink sort of thing, you know. Um, what else can I say about this? Okay, it's disappointing, you know, because... Uh, you know, he took his channel down and that's all fine. He was copping a lot of shit about quality of video and stuff like that. Now, look, he ain't National Bloody Geographic and he's not, um, you know, he's not going down the uh, beach to witness a shark attack as David Bloody Ettenborough or anything like that, okay? Um, he was just a guy having a good day out, expecting a good day out, probably just getting all his fishing gear ready and that for the uh, fish because... Um, no, it was about 4.30 in the afternoon, so I don't think they would have been there for too long. They must have just got there. But I'm, that's only a presumption. I don't know how long the fishermen were there for. So anyway, take that with whatever you want. But the fact is that um, uh, I guess when you see something like that, um, it all happens so quick. And then, you know, you're not going to uh, try to be getting your phone out of your bloody pocket and uh, telling the swimmer in the water just hold that shark up mate um i've got to polish me lens i want to get a good uh, video of you know a good clean video it ain't gonna happen that bullshit ain't gonna happen you know he's just ripping his phone out and instantly try to you know probably tragically going through the buttons and trying to press his phone to get his camera to work and he did a bloody good job of everything he got now some t some people were complaining because he was panning over away from where the shark was. I mean, I think we all seen a blood enough. We didn't need to see every little gruesome detail of this. Plus, mind you, he would have been actually looking at this live himself as, you know, and not watching what his phone was picking up and all that stuff. He would have been in somewhat of shock, and I wouldn't be surprised now if he's got PTSD, right? So, um, which is post-traumatic stress disorder for those that don't know and people get it from the war and all those sort of things, okay? It's, it's what happens to you after, after a horrific um, scene or event or something like that happens in your life and um, it sort of comes back as a, as a, um, a flashback or something like that, you know, and, and it repeats in your mind. And so if he was getting some mental health treatment and that after that, you know, because it might have taken a while for that to kick in, you know, and then um, that's probably why they, they probably recommended he take his channel down because of all the bullshit comments and he kept going back to it. And he was answering a few of my questions and um, thumbing up a few of my comments as if, uh, you know, because he didn't really like to, um, 
um, you know, I was trying to help him out, you know, with uh, all the all the dickheads, right? So I was, I, w I was putting things in perspective, you know, exactly what I just said about, you know, you know, the the the, the poor guy was just getting his phone out and taking a, a video of what he could, you know, and it was great that he then then someone said, oh, how could you be video instead of instead of helping the guy? I mean, mate. If he didn't take that video, you wouldn't have the information we had today. And there was no way he was going to get in there and help that guy. There was no way. They couldn't throw a lifeline. They couldn't do anything. Okay? There was nothing they could do. It would have only ended up more fatalities if anyone had a bloody else jumped in that water to help that guy out. I'm sure of it. Whether they got eaten or not, I don't know. But they would have probably lost limbs or something. They would have ended up probably uh, dead. Um, and, 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 uh, you know, um, even when firefighters go into a house to rescue, they, their number one priority, um, uh, even in mining and confined spaces and that, your priority is as a whole watcher or a, a confined space watcher is, or, or, um, is your life first before you go in and rescue anyone, you know? And that's just, um, that's how people are trained these days and that's what happens. It's different when um, surfies are all out on the boards in the water together, they'll help each other. Of course they will. They're the best thing they know. They know. They're sensible. They, they know the water. They get in together. They huddle together to make themselves appear larger. Once they're together, they can get the, uh, the, their wounded mate in or something like that, you know? They're not bloody stupid. Um, they, they talk and they know each other and they, they, they understand all this and... Um, they know the whole, they know the shark's uh, instincts and that, you know. So you can't expect these fishermen just to, you know, behave like that, you know. It's just not going to happen. Um, okay, the guys continued fishing, continued fishing. There's another one. That's, that's a big one that they carried on about, um, the people. But you know what? There's been a fatality at that scene. And it could be considered a crime scene um, because it'd have to go maybe to coroner's inquest, which is another good reason for the video. Um, and um, the fishermen would have had to stay there with their buckets and all their stuff still in the place that it was. And there'd be um, an investigation, a coroner's inquiry, investigation, all that sort of stuff take place. So they couldn't just uh, they couldn't just piss off in their cars and go, you know, pack up their shit and go because. Um, you know, they would have been called back anyway. Um, so, while you're there, you know, what's been done is done. They can't change that. They're not responsible for other people's actions and, uh, you know, other people's... Um, uh, whatever it is. They're not responsible for other... Um, you know, for what other people... Do you know they're there fishing? They can look after each other. They can do that. But you know. Um, anyway, I've made other videos. You can go and have a look at all that shit. What I'm pissed off about is uh, people monetizing um, that videos of that incident. And it's not even their bloody uh, their material. It belongs to. Um, um, it belongs to uh, oh, Kevin. So, um, and then, you know, Channel 7 and Channel 9 and all that, I don't think they paid him anything for it. And, uh, I don't, you know, I'm sure if Kevin got money, he probably uh, would have gave uh, a big portion of that or part of it to um, the family and the, uh, you know, the, the, um, the girlfriend. Um we all know bloody Rupert Murdoch, if he's still alive, I don't know. Whoever's taken over from him, if he's not, you know, um, the papers and uh, the media, they all cashed in on it. And uh, I bet they haven't given any uh, money to the family or the, um, or the wife. And I think that should happen as, um, as a point of law. You know, if they're going to milk... Uh, uh, I, I think they need to uh, pay a percentage to um, for compensation, especially um, this sort of stuff going over the media and people having to read, you know, the family having to open up the paper and see it all again and 
on the TV and they don't, they don't, uh, they bang on about it. And I think all those, um, all those big corporations, I think they should be given a percentage of the money that they get from that sort of incident to the, uh, you know, I call them the victims, uh, really, uh, the people that are still alive, the family and the closest, um, the closest people to him, you know, um, in this case, him, all right? So, um, yeah, because I'm not a pronoun bloke, all right? I'm not into this bullshit either. So, yes, okay, as far as um, the shark, uh, I did a video on the measurements and all that sort of stuff, and uh, it seems that the shark was 16 foot. That's uh, the same as five metres. Um, that puts it in as a female, if it's a great white species. Um, the video I also did was um, on a measurement of the dorsal fin, and it seems that that is about two foot, which is, uh, I think, pretty crazy. Uh, but you'll see me um, measure that with me verniers uh, against a known, um, a known perspective being a seagull just out in line with that shark. Um, so the seagulls are actually 11 inches, so we'll just call that a foot. That's close enough, it's pretty close, because it's in flight, so it's probably a bit more uh, spread out than um, perched. So uh, I don't know how they actually weigh them, from tail to head or tail to beak, but it's pretty close. I've got a bird here myself, um, and I, I measured him, so I sort of know a little bit about measuring birds. Here he is, have a quick look. There's Wally, hello Wally. Hey, hello boy. Right, so anyway, um, there you go, folks. Oh, one more thing I want to mention. Here you go, you've got these environmental uh, people carrying on about sharks and they don't attack people and shit. Well, why? Uh, just here, I think. In um, Anyway, they take people out in um, boats, big light fishing type vessels. And they put them in cages and they put them over the side. And then they, they take them out to shark locations, known great white locations. And then they throw bait over the side for these sharks. So they're drawing sharks into the cages. And when the sharks bite the cages and that, they feed them. So they're, they're connecting people to the food chain, right? Because this is typical animal, animal behaviour, right? They're connecting people and boats. So that's why great whites are always coming up to boats. And that's why they're coming up to people, because they're connecting people with food. So all these places, you know, for tourism, oh, we'll take you out to see sharks in cages and all that shit. Well, this is what's happening, folks. It's turned into big bloody business, and it's, uh, it's eating people now. So I think that's a big problem that needs to uh, be addressed. You're going to go and feed these sharks. Don't forget, these same sharks will, like I mentioned in my other video, they will follow the streams in the warm summer months and they'll head for the southern waters. And as they pass by these shores, shorelines, and you've got fishermen and swimmers together, and I think that's another issue, I think, um, um, you know, where there are swimmers, there shouldn't be fishermen. And I think where there are fishermen, there shouldn't be swimmers. But if you go swim where there are fishermen in fish waters, um, regularly fish waters in particular, it's on you, buddy. Um, and no one else is responsible for that bullshit. Uh, I used to be like that myself, I mentioned it, but after watching that video I thought how lucky was I and how stupid was I, because when you actually um, see that video you realise that, um, you know, once you're in the jaws of a big beast like that, a big shark like that, you, you've already made up your mind and you can't take your cards off the table, you can't sort of like say, hang on mate, I um, can I just, um, can I... Can I back out of this deal, you know? It's over. It's on. You know, the deal's already done. And that's, um, that was a, yeah. So I think my seagoing habits and my swimming habits, I used to spear 
uh, swim with a spear and a knife, but I, I never wore a wetsuit, and I used to go out for miles at sea uh, from the shore, from the mainland. Um, if there was a, a shelf drop off and that, I wouldn't really go over that too far. I think the only one I sort of did there was off Palm Beach Jetty over in West Australia. There's a bit of a shelf drop off because we got the grain terminal up the up the just a little bit up the road there, a couple of k's up the road there, and um, another one is um, off uh, uh, Port Nalunga Jetty. It's not actually a shelf, but there's a big like reef, and on the other side of that reef is uh, it just goes real deep, real quick, and it goes dark and just like you know, sort of like the water, like this guy was in, and. Uh, yeah, I mean, if I got caught out at the back of um, Safety Bay uh, near Waikiki, where there was a shark attack there just a couple of years ago, a great white shark fatality, um, I used to go out the back of Battleship Island and uh, Penguin Island, where they had fairy penguins, and uh, Battleship Island was just a, a non-populated rock island and um there was another couple of rock islands just like that i used to go and snorkel and that all around there i never spearfished anything um when i was going out that far um i just used it as something to poke and prod something if it come near me and uh believe me i used to um i i, I would have adrenaline and escalated senses all the way out and all the way in and I used to regularly like swim in circles around looking around I had good visibility though the water went out for miles like that and it stayed at 20 foot deep and I don't think that really matters and that's another point you know like um that was another awakening you know doing these shark investigations and finding out how many people are attacked in knee height water and um watching uh, a lot of shark videos lately and it's um you know because back when i was um doing it all we didn't even have bloody internet it was back in the 80s you know so you didn't know all this shit you watched jaws and that's all you knew um plus you know about what you read in the papers and that's all you knew and 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 as i leave comments um in the bottom of my last video um, on the uh, to do with the um, dorsal fin which I recommend you go and have a look at those links you'll see there's been a lot more shark great white shark sightings and fatality there was a fatality up at Tun Curry um, nine months ago so their 60 year um, uh, 60 year last fatality in that uh, at that beach is out the window mate it's fucking out the window all right because uh, three hours up the road is a lot quicker by ocean for a shark in a straight line as a crow flies. Um, uh, that would be his hunting ground if he was, uh, but I think it was a rogue just coming through. But same time, this year, uh, sorry, this, this time next year, be mindful about swimming out in the open side of the, uh, off, the, off the coast because um, that shark... He knows that area now, and he'll probably uh, she she will probably come down there again for another sniff around, knowing it got a good feed this year. So uh, and it's probably down, you know, visiting Victoria now. So if you're in Victoria, stay out of bloody water because it's heading down to the southern waters. If you're around Melbourne, get out of the water. <laughs> That's what I can tell you because. Uh, well, once it's down there, it'll be smelling seal and all that, you know, be excited to get down to seals. But that was the other thing. This shark, during this attack, it was thrashing around. It was so excited. It was almost in a playful sort of mood. It was just, it was thrashing around like I haven't seen, not even those sharks that come up to cages. I don't see a shark this excited. It was so excited to get a feed. It must have been starving. I mean, literally starving, this, this shark. It really was, I think. And they, it wasn't acting on any part of its brain, as I keep repeating through my other videos. Go back and watch them, if you like. None of them are money at all. It's not about money, getting money out of you, nothing. I'm not interested, all right? What I'm interested in is getting information out to all you people um, that are beachgoers, hopefully, and that um, you pick up some of this stuff and put it in your beach kit and take it with you. There's no need to stop swimming, there's no need to stop enjoying the beach, but you need awareness and respect for the ocean, and don't leave your shit and trash on the ocean either, your needles, whatever, 
don't leave none of your cans, nothing on the beach. Just, you know, keep the beach clean. Um, if you see someone else's shit, pick it up. Um, you know, I love the beach, I really do. And I love the animals and the mammals and even the savage bastards of the beach, I really do. They all belong there, that's where they are. Um, I think, um, am I into shark killing? Um, maybe a question that arrived. Look, I'm, I'm on the fence with it all. I think if a shark eats two or three um, people and, it, and, it, and it's hunting people, it um, becomes like that. Um, if it's a shark known to have taken um, like more than one person, um, I think pushing it out to sea is no good. Uh, you know, and to lose that one shark rather than it breed and teach its, uh, maybe teach its young ones to uh, behave like that. Um, but once again, I put a lot of responsibility back onto these conservation bloody groups, although I wanted to be a marine biologist myself. Um, but messing with the ocean is no good. Leave nature alone. Don't go fucking feed sharks if you don't want to eat them and don't put people in front of them while you're feeding them. Okay, I'm easy. Have a good day, folks, and be careful in the water. See you later.